today we're in the Castelo Branco district of Portugal and we're going to go and visit a place called, it's a town called Certa or Certa, I'm not sure, uh, I think there are different ways to pronounce it, um, so I'm not sure which one is actually officially correct, but anyway, it's a nice town, we don't really know it very well, we've only ever driven through it, we're going to go there because we've got a few things to do, um, we're not staying too far from it, and so that's where we're headed and let's see what we find there. It's been very, very rainy and you know, it's just been absolutely miserable and we've finally got a little bit of clear weather. We're not sure how long this is going to last for. Um, I believe there's going to be rain in a few hours again and then for another week or longer. So we're just kind of trying to get out whenever the weather has a bit of a clearing, you know, and see what we can what we can film. I do want to mention that there are actually quite a few um, expats from different countries um, that have moved to the Castelo Branco area, and bought land, and you know, and they're living self-sufficient lifestyles. Um, so it's still quite a popular area. It's quite sparsely populated. Castelo Branco area so um, I think a lot of people who really want to just buy a piece of land and just kind of uh, be away from the, the crowds and the overpopulated places really enjoy coming here and, um, and moving here and but you know with anything and whenever you move to a place you know, well, before you move to a place I should say you really need to visit and you need to find out some more about it and you need to actually go there physically and actually try to get to know it and see how you feel there because visiting somewhere and actually moving there permanently can be quite you know quite a different experience so if you visit just with the idea of the possibility of moving to a place you need to spend some time there a month two months whatever just to really get a feel see if it's the right thing for you and I think people have moved here in the past because they have been able to afford land and you know houses that they could fix up but again there's quite a lot of bureaucracy in Portugal especially with um, you know fixing up ruins and old houses and things like this it can take a long time to get approval be talking a year two years it depends so you have to be aware of that so you have to do your homework before taking the plunge and moving and of course that's almost the same for anywhere really any country every country has its you know it's good it's bad that's just the way it goes and we're coming into Certa now As is always the case, it seems to be the more the older part of the towns and cities that are more attractive and more interesting, doesn't it? So this is kind of the outskirts of a little bit, I guess. It's actually bigger than we than we thought it would be, though. And for those who like supermarkets, well, there's the <laughs> Continent, which is like a chain of supermarkets here in Portugal. And we're just going over the canal now. Oh, yes, can get a little bit of an image of it there. That's nice. It's quite a, seems like quite a nice little town. Well, here we are. We're in this little area here. And, oh, that's a bar over there. I just want to show it's like a little recreation area, park. There's a really nice bridge over there. You head out towards that. Now, if I was going to move to a town in Portugal, I think this might be the kind of place I'd like. A little bit more, because it just seems more picturesque, more interesting not kind of just urban sprawl kind of thing you know? 
don't know what the cost of housing is here. It's probably still quite reasonable. You know, you hear people complain about how the cost of housing has gone up because of expats and so on, people coming here to retire and so on. But I just want to mention, the fault is not with the expats. The fault is the usual thing called greed, which exists everywhere where house prices are artificially raised because of demand or interest, you know, whatever. That's the usual excuse, so. Ah, here we go. Here's a little bit of information about it. Here you have the 17th century bridge. It's nice. I love this old tree as well. That. Gorgeous. So this was built to replace a Roman bridge that was in the vicinity, I understand. It's actually in pretty good condition really, isn't it? It's a little cafe bar kind of thing over there. I'd really love to see more cafes, tea shops, things like that, rather than bars everywhere. But I guess this is the trend. There's a nice kind of park here. Good for a picnic. Solid construction, look at this. Amazing, isn't it? These, these walls, these foundations. Makes you kind of wonder um, if there really were battles actually on this bridge. You know, people actually died here during the uh, invasions. People of Serta were trying to defend their home. So anyway, um, there was a famous oak tree here somewhere. I don't know exactly where. But this is looks like an olive oil uh, mill. There's a press, perhaps. It's pretty elaborate. So, anyway, this, from what I can understand, is a replica. It's kind of nice. My grandfather used to make olive oil and I still remember him doing it. He'd pick the olives and then he'd have this kind of pretty simple press that he would uh, turn by hand. That's how it was made. It was all homemade. Look how nice this is. Just a nice little garden area. You know, I always love it when the little wildflowers start coming out daisies and I know how much people hate wildflowers which is very sad indeed but it's just always it's such a uh, welcome sight to me and just reminds me that spring and summer are on their way it's like a little greeting from nature anyway there's some kind of old church there just wanted to capture some of the old trees here are these the ones they were talking about in that um, that kind of sign thing over there, that placard? I'm not sure, but these look like they're pretty old, don't they? Poplars? Is that right? I don't have that in front of me right now. So, I don't know, but anyway, look how lovely these trees are. Look at that, that 
trunk. Gorgeous. And over on the other side there too, you can see them over there. I sometimes wish we could have more places like Venice, you know, where <laughs> it's not everywhere you look isn't marred by parked cars. There's just people walking around, bicycles. Wouldn't that be lovely? Uh, it's raining again. <laughs> so let's see how much we can film. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, we're going to try and walk into the more central part of Serta now. Okay, well, <laughs> it's raining, so we're walking under the umbrella. <laughs> uh, we're here in the central part of Serta, so let me turn this around so you can see better. So here you go, here's the it's a little canal area here. Um, it's kind of nice, there's another bridge over there in the distance. Don't know what it says up there. We haven't been down there. It's kind of a nice area though. It's pretty old. And there's a nice mural there which looks that's a painting. I thought it was a photograph. It's actually a painting, but look at that. The old way of life here in these places. A little bit of recreation. Boating here in the canal probably. I just heard lightning. <laughs> Look at that. Anyway, this gives you an idea. It's part of it. It's pretty big. This is just a little part of it. Okay, we're just walking up this rainy kind of road. Oh dear. This um, kind of hard to film in this. Okay, we're just walking up this kind of older road and it's just so it's raining so much though. Another little old part of the neighborhood here. I kind of like the way that, like for example, that looks like um, that's been built onto an old uh, ruin kind of thing there. It's kind of cute. Love that kind of architectural creativity. There's a place for sale up there. Some of these are in pretty bad shape though, these old buildings. I imagine you'd have to do a ton of work, like replace the roof and everything, you know. I don't know what the foundations would even be like. So you have to really do your homework. Look at that. Up there, it looks old. Little cute little shops here. This looks like a little supermarket or something. Yeah, it does. Some other little areas here. We're just kind of walking up the road here. Okay, now this gives us a better view here. We just kind of walked up the hill. Now we're going to walk back down to the car because we can't spend too much time in this rain. Otherwise we'll get sick. <laughs> okay, just waiting for the traffic. See some of those little houses for sale there too. But again, you gotta be really careful and find out exactly what condition they're in before buying anything. Really getting rained on. Look at all these cute little It's cute little shops here. It's like a little art gallery kind of place or something. Is it? Does it say anything? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. A lot of them are closed. 
just one thing I find here in Portugal. You see these cute little shops in these places. There's so many of them. It's funny this all the time. I don't know how people make a living here. That one's open. I think. Maybe it isn't. It'll be there. I honestly don't know how people make a living here in these little shops. Not a little clothing store. place or not? I'm not sure. Perfume? Hmm. Anyway. That is a little cafe, snack bar kind of place. Um, one thing I do wish that would happen here in Portugal is see more of these little businesses thriving and using their creativity and so on. There's a little shoe shop. And this looks like a little wool shop. And of course it's closed. But you know, maybe it's because it's coming up to Easter. Yeah, that's what it is. Forgot all about that. Yeah, it's Easter Friday, isn't it? That explains it. see it's a very rainy day and um, yeah so this is about as much as we can film of uh, Serta today but it's okay we got a little bit just to give you an idea maybe when the weather improves we can come back and explore a bit more and see if there's anything else to film On the canal over here, the side of the canal. It looked quite nice when we drove past it. So I just wanted to little shop. Again, I wish I wish the little shops had more business here. Like in the UK. Um, and in the more quaint old places in the US, little towns and stuff. There we go, there's another little bridge over there, look at that. changing the nature, the natural vegetation too much. So then you can take this little trail all the way, the main area, main street there. And I believe up there is uh, Castello de Serta. Okay, which we weren't able to go to today because of the rain I mean it's it's cleared up a little bit now but you know it's probably not gonna last very long it's still thick clouds here so um, this little something about the castle um, it seems that there isn't that much historical information about it apparently there is a legend associated with a chieftain a Lusitanian chieftain who um, his wife apparently 
had um, hot oil in a frying pan um, when she was frying eggs or something and she threw the hot oil over some Romans during an attack. And so that's how um, Serta Serta got its name because that means um, pan or frying pan in Portuguese. So, um, uh, so you know, that's kind of one of the legends and there's probably a lot more information associated with that legend than I'm relating right now, but that just kind of gives you an idea. So, uh, it's actually a very cute little place, but um, we, I don't know how much we of it we actually managed to see, because it's quite big, but this is kind of the canal area, and we saw that nice little park area, so that gives us an idea that this is quite a nice little town. And that's about it for the filming today, I'm afraid, because it's just a little too much. And there was actually some thunder and lightning too. So, uh, so we're heading out now. So see you next time.